afternoon, everybody. It is wonderful to be here with you. Um, I'm going to share my screen so I can show you what we're doing today. Give me just a second to get this nice and pretty. Um, oh, that does not look pretty. What is up with this? Oh, my screen, my, my slides do not want to share properly. Courtney, do you want to give it a shot? I can see your slides. Let's but it see. but it's not taking okay. up my screen, so it's so distracting. Let's not do that. Um, anyway, well, while we get our, our slides up, uh, this is like your first lesson in leadership. You just never know when you have to pivot. So uh, being prepared for that is a good way to start practicing your leadership skills. It is wonderful to be here with you. I am um, Debbie Bergeron, Dr. B to most of you. Uh, thrilled to be here to talk about leadership with my buddy, Zuli. She and I work on all of the leadership courses here at the Academy at NHSA. And part of what we thought we would do is um, have some conversations around leadership for folks who are thinking about leadership and or you're just getting started, or you're wondering about what does it mean to be a leader? A lot of folks may not have a leadership title, but you're doing leadership stuff. Um, in Head Start, a lot of us do those kinds of things. So this is a really bite-sized piece of like a, a basic leadership um, module that we might offer in one of our courses, but it's to get your juices flowing and to get you excited about the idea of taking wherever you are now to the next level. So without further delay, we're going to jump in here. We like to remind you um, when we do these sessions, um, be willing to share your wisdom. Now, this is a 30-minute session, so we're not going to do breakout groups and a lot of that stuff because we don't have time, but there's a chat there. I see everyone saying hello. It's wonderful for everybody to be welcoming each other. Share your ideas as we go through this because that chat is we get to, we get to see it. We can uh, reach back out to you. You can uh, connect with us. And that's a great way for everybody to learn. Connect what you're learning to your own context. So we're going to talk about leadership today and leadership styles. And all of you are coming from different places, different size programs, different positions. So you have to take what we talk about and figure out how to apply that to your own context. I promise you, all of this is universal. You will find that connection. Uh, be vulnerable, lean into your discomfort. Some of what we're going to talk about today is going to ask you to really think about who you are. I can tell you when I do these things, sometimes it gets a little uncomfortable because I'm finding out things that I maybe didn't know or didn't think of myself in that way, but be honest and then give yourself some grace and goodwill, goodwill to everybody here. We're going to learn from each other and together. And hopefully in 30 minutes, you're going to feel like you have a little bit more on your plate in terms of leadership. All right, let's dig in and get started. So what we are going to talk about today is thinking about yourself in the form of a leader in a leadership position, whether it's with a title or a task or just in general as you go through your day and to think about what kind of leader you are. So to get started, we're going to go through these types of leadership. And there, there are many types. I pick these because I feel like it covers just about every style of leadership that could be um, possible. So servant leadership is one. Distributed leadership is another. Transformational leadership is our third type. Empathetic leadership is on our list. And, and adaptive leadership is on our list. And what we're going to do is talk through each of these different leadership styles. I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to share somebody with you that I consider falls into this category. And I want you to start thinking about which, as I describe them, relates to you. Which, what do you relate to now? Even just to sharing these titles, you're probably jumping in and thinking, oh, that's me because these words mean something to you. But let's dig deeper into what they mean in the context of leadership theory. And then I want you to start thinking about where you fit most, um, most appropriately. Obviously, these are things that are gonna cross over. You'll find cro different things in different categories, but where, is you, where are you identifying most? So in servant leadership, we talk about a number of different aspects. Servant leaders look generally to, to see what they can do to serve, just like it says, the people around them in order to change the behavior that'll serve the purpose of the organization. 
A servant leader is putting others' needs before his or her own needs. They are really thinking of themselves as almost leading from behind. You may have heard that phrase before, where you're where you're supporting people in this way, not top down, and taking care of people and believing that when you take care of people first, where you put others first, you're actually building capacity that ends up um, creating leadership that drives an organization forward. So my example of a servant leader, um, we have got Mary Barra. She is the CEO of General Motors. And if you read about her, she's an amazing leader, a real pioneer for women in leadership, especially in a company like General Motors. But if you read about her style of leadership, she talks about identifying as a servant leader. So even though she's leading this enormous organization, she's approaching her day in such a way that considers other people's needs before her own. And that's how she has managed to be so successful as a leader in many different um, capacities, but in particular as her, as her job as the leader of an enormous organization like General Motors. So think for just a minute, how do you identify with servant leadership? Are there pieces of that that you think, oh, I do that, or I, I kind of would love to be that way, or you know someone in your organization who is that way? Start to kind of let that um, simmer a little bit in your brain. All right, we'll go to the next one. We have distributed leadership. Now, distributed leadership is just like it sounds. It distributes. It is sharing power with others and providing opportunities to uh, for, for others to be leaders. Distributed leadership um, is typically describing somebody who is really solid at delegating. They feel super comfortable giving other people leadership opportunities. They don't need the credit. Um, they feel trust in people's ability to carry something through. They don't necessarily need things to be done exactly the way they would do them. Because if you're somebody and a lot of us, if we're honest, let's admit it, if we're thinking leadership, a lot of us like to be in control, but a distributed leader is letting go of that control because they believe in people and their ability to carry something through, even if they're not doing it exactly the way that I would do it, for example. Um, the beauty of distributed leadership is you're really building capacity because now if you lead a team of 10, instead of you doing everything and you let all 10 of those people feel a little bit of leadership and, and autonomy and the ability to grow, now you have exponentially grown your ability, your capacity of your organization. So distributed leadership is the exact opposite of micromanagement. You may have heard that um, term before. That's where somebody is really checking every single box that everybody is doing and almost incapable of, of stepping back. And that can be very um, debilitating. So our example of a distributed leader is our very own NHSA's executive director, Yasmina Vinci. And I use Yasmina in this example because I work for Yasmina and I can tell you that she is one of the best distributed leaders I've worked for. And I've worked for a lot of really good leaders in my career, but she is very trusting of the people she hires and she believes in them and their ability to carry something through. Now, full disclosure, her expectations are high and she wants you to cross that finish line. She's not gonna tell you how to do it, not gonna hold your hand through the whole thing, but she's gonna trust you to do it. And the beauty of that is she can take a small organization, NHSA is not very big as far as the number of staff we have, but we're able to do really big things because everybody feels empowered to make decisions and carry things through. So that is distributed leadership. All right, then we'll go to the next one. Think about distributed leadership. How much of that do you have inside yourself? And we go to transformational leadership. And transformational leadership is really about somebody who is fantastic at change. Transforming, just like it says, an organization from one space to the next. Now, this is such an easy one to talk about because we all just went through COVID. Our best leaders during COVID were transformational leaders. They're people who are not afraid of change. They know how to um, gently carry staff through change because that's very hard. And they're able to inspire people to want to achieve 
more than they thought they could, to do things they thought would be impossible. A really good example of this, if we think about what happened during COVID um, and how technology began to play such a huge role in the work we do, our transformational leaders had no hesitation of figuring out how to take technology and make it work for us because we we had to be isolated. Um, and they they weren't they weren't afraid to do that. And they inspired the people who work for them to not be afraid to do that. And I heard story after story from Head Start programs telling me we've had more parents at our policy council meetings than we did when we were in person because the leadership grasped that opportunity, made a transformation from an in-person to an online policy council meeting, and all of a sudden they have all this involvement. So not afraid of innovation and risk taking. They're really comfortable with it and they can get other people on board and allay the fears that sometimes come with with uh, with change. So my example of transformational leadership is Elon Musk. And I like using him as an example for this because he is notorious for failing in public and being unafraid to do it and then go back and do it again. He, um, I think there are three images online of rockets blowing up in front of everybody. And instead of walking away and saying, maybe this is too hard, maybe this is more, we can't really afford to do this again. He'd go back, solve the problem and try again. And so someone who's just not afraid of change, not afraid of failing because failing is an opportunity to learn and then moving to the next level. And now we've got all kinds of things going on in space as a result of a lot of the work that Elon Musk's leadership and his teams have done to move that kind of science forward. So um, this is a really good example. You might think in your own in your own organizations, who do you have who really drives change? They're not afraid. They can get other people on board and excited about it. That's transformational leadership. All right, empathetic leadership. I feel like a lot of people here are going to relate to this because I feel like Head Start is naturally empathetic. We build um, empathetic leaders, build awareness for protective factors. They're very sensitive to people's situations, to what they might be experiencing. They're trauma informed. They're seeing things through that lens on a very organic, in a very organic way. Um, they're very mindful, very intentional in the work that they do, emphasizing the positivity, um, acknowledging people's work, clarifying expectations so that people can be successful. And, and this is like a, a tactical thing. They encourage people to take time off and take vacation that they have earned because they know that when people are well-rested and healthy and their batteries are full, they're going to appear at work and be more um, capable of doing a great job. And they treat people like humans and human beings need breaks. So I think when you're thinking about this, think of your own leadership and people you see in, in their positions. How many of them do you see as empathetic? They get you. They understand where you're coming from. And when in your own position, if you're leading anybody in your in your work, and that could be a teacher and an instructional aide, a teacher leads an instructional aide. Are you looking at that through empathetic eyes, through a, it's not sympathy, it's empathy. It's understanding that everybody brings unique selves to, to work and being aware of that and able to respond to it creates empathetic leadership. So in this example, um, I like using the Microsoft CEO. If you read about uh, him, he will self-describe as being an empathetic person. And that's the way he leads a huge company like Microsoft. I think you know, most people, if they thought about who the leader of Microsoft would be, it's a tech company, it's huge, it's very successful, makes a lot of money, but here's a leader who actually looks at that kind of organization through empathetic eyes and wants to treat people in such a way that they want to show up for work and do a good job. Um, and so the outcomes, of course, end up being very successful um, because he's taking into account people's well-being. And the when you when you take that into account, people are able to come to work and they can perform at a higher level. All right, I think we have one more adaptive leadership. So when we look at adaptive leadership, we're looking at people who are really good at inspiring and motivating. Uh, they're very good communicators. They're very good collaborators and can coordinate teams and bring people together. And um, they are 
They are on site and they are in the community. So they see themselves as a leader of the organization here, but they also have a broader view of the big community. And they know that bringing the community in and creating those cross relationships and collaborative opportunities makes this organization stronger. So they're seeing that collaboration really um, clearly. I think of adaptive leadership and transformational leadership as being very closely aligned with this sort of collaboration focus as being the big difference between the two. <clears throat> Both of these types of leaders are gonna be comfortable with change. That's gonna be something they'd have in common. And so for this particular um, leadership style, I think Mahatma Gandhi is the great example of adaptive leadership. Here is somebody who led an entire nation and inspired people to freedom and through a very peaceful way, through communication, through collaboration, um, and, you know, and was was willing to put himself on the line for that. You you could probably look at this and say, wait, he's really empathetic, too. And he certainly is. And he's really transformational. And he certainly is. But I think thinking of him as an adaptive leader is for me when I'm when I was looking for an example of one that I think um, fits really well. So whew, that's a lot of talking at you, not my normal teaching style, but we don't have a lot of time. And I wanted you to get a sense of what these words mean. So what I asked you to do was think about them as they're going through, what did you relate to? Um, what did you hear where you went, oh, I think that's who I am. I That's what I relate to as a human being. And I will tell you, full disclosure for me, the hardest one on here, the one that I don't do as naturally, and I think I'm a nice person, but the empathetic leadership, and I have to really think about it. I come to work very task oriented. So I have to really stop and think about people's wellness and making sure people are getting what they need. So I don't think I'm naturally empathetic, an empathetic leader. So what I do with that self-reflection is I use it in my work by remembering to be intentional about empathy, because I know that that's a part of my leadership that I have to be a little bit more thoughtful about. And that's what good leadership is about. It's about being good at reflecting on who you are knowing where your strengths are, and then knowing where you want to be really thoughtful so you fill in those gaps. And it may be you doing something different, or it may be hiring someone who's really good at doing that thing. And that's also a sign of good leadership, is bringing the right team to the table to get the work done. All right, that is a lot. And I want to turn it over to Zuli because she's got a really exciting activity for you. And I absolutely love that you all are putting this in the chat. Go for it. In the chat, put what you're relating to so you can kind of hear from each other. Um, and and do some reflection and, and type it out. And it gives you a little bit of uh, of processing there. All right, Zuli, take it away. Hi, Head Start, Early Head Start leaders. I truly enjoyed just reading the chat and all the comments. I'm glad that you already uh, thinking about, well, what type of leadership I am, right? Or maybe I'm, I'm a combination of two, right? That is absolutely fine. So now, Let's put into practice what we just learned about uh, leadership style, shall we? So here's Wait, what we're going can to you do. Turn your camera on. Is your camera working? Oh my goodness! I didn't. You know want to see your beautiful not showing face. my face? And I'm so sorry. I I'm having some technical difficulties to be honest, and still my clock on my computer says that it's 4:02 when it's actually 4:18 here uh, in Georgia. So my apologies. I hope you can see me now. Right, so we are going to practice now. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, on the screen, you can see uh, there's a new scenario and I have uh, multiple ones. Let's see how much time we have, if we can go through all of them. But I will read them and we'll discuss them together. Each of these scenarios demonstrate a distinct leadership approach. As I read each scenario, try to identify which leadership style each scenario represents. So uh, based on the leadership styles Dr. B explained, I didn't describe a few minutes ago. Also, as you reflect on these examples, considering the following, what are the key characteristics of each style? What made this leader effective or ineffective? Could be. And most importantly, what, what would you like to change or improve about your current leadership style? All right. 
So I'm going to read this first scenario right here. And this is Lisa. Lisa, the new manager of a struggling customer service department, arrived early on her first day. Instead of going to her office, she immersed herself in the team's daily operations, listening to calls and observing processes firsthand. When she noticed, um, Sarah, a representative, is struggling with a difficult customer. Lisa approached her afterwards with genuine concerns, asking how she could make Sarah's job easier. This hands-on, compassionate approach continued as Lisa worked alongside her team, experiencing their challenges directly. She prioritized her staff needs, advocating for system upgrades, improved training, and maintaining an open door policy for suggestions. By focusing on removing obstacles and supporting her team, Lisa not only improved department performance, but also fostered a positive work environment where employees felt valued and heard. Hmm. All right, Lisa, Lisa. So what do you think is Lisa? Lisa might be what? If I think I can see the chat, let me see for a second. If people want to uh, raise their hand, like use their raise hand. Um, yeah, you can unmute as well. You could unmute, um, servant. If there's anyone who want to share, you can unmute. All right. Mostly of you are saying adapted leader, servant. I think more mostly servant and empathetic leader, right? And I knew that this type of scenario might be a little bit tricky for those that are thinking, well, empathetic. Hmm. She's putting the needs of her staff first, right? So it could be, well, it could be empathetic or it can be uh, as a servant leader, uh, leadership, right? But I, in reality, servant leadership, that's the one it is. That's right. So she is really focused on supporting and helping the staff. That's her priority number one for Lisa. So uh, anyone have any questions about this scenario? I think we have time for probably all three that I have here. All right, anyone? All right, so this is our second scenario. And here it is. This is Sandy. At a growing educational nonprofit, Director Sandy implemented a new management approach by dividing staff into specialized teams, each led by individuals chosen for their expertise rather than seniority. She gave team leads significant autonomy in decision making and resource allocations within their project scopes. Weekly meetings became collaboratively forums where Sandy facilitated open discussions among team leads, encouraging peers' advice and shared problem solving. For a major funding opportunity, Sandy assembled a cross-functional task force, stepping back to allow the group to develop the proposal collaboratively. This approach fostered a sense of ownership and accountability throughout the organization, empower empowering staff at all levels to take initiative. The result was increased innovation, improved staff retention, and more effective project outcomes as the organization leveraged the diverse skills and perspectives of its entire workforce. All right, I see the chat. Mm -hmm. Distributed leadership, yes, that's right. Distributed leadership it is. So this second example shows a nonprofit director who took a unique approach to managing projects. This leader divided responsibilities among team members, giving them significant autonomy and created an environment where ideas could come from anyone, regardless of their position. So probably you are thinking about one of the leaders in, in your program as well. That is, that is like that, right? So um, great job is definitely distributed leadership anyone want to add something to this scenario and my apologies because i know i'm checking the the time we'll still have a few minutes all right so let's go to the next i think we still 
can cover the last one. And this is the Thurston area right here. And let's, let's know a little bit more about Jamie. This is a new marketing director, all right, with a vision to revolutionize the company's approach. Instead of maintaining this, the status quo, Jamie challenged team members to reimagine their roles and push creative boundaries. During brainstorming sessions, Jamie encouraged even the most unconventional ideas, often building up upon them to showcase their potential. When junior designer Alex hesitantly suggested a risky company concept, Jamie not only praised the idea, but also assigned Alex to lead the project, providing mentorship along the way. Jamie's enthusiasm was contagious, inspiring the team to take on challenges they once thought impossible. Regular workshops were introduced to develop new skills and Jamie consistently communicated a compelling vision of the firm becoming an industry innovator. As the team members began to exceed their own expectation, the firm's work notably improved, attracting high profile clients under Jamie's guidance. Uh, what started as a conventional marketing agency transformed into a cutting edge creative powerhouse. And I cannot read this. Okay, with employees discovering talents they never knew they had. Yes. I see uh, the chat. Well, there's some of the thinking of adapted leadership, okay, and transformational. It's definitely transformational leadership. And I could have easily put actually one one leader that I know is transformational uh, leader, and he's right on the call, Dr. Deborah Berger. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, definitely not afraid to take risk. Great ideas and um, always supporting the team to to think outside the box so definitely um, think about those type of leaderships in your program do you know anyone that is from has is transformational um, leader or adapted leader or a servant leader but also most importantly just think about you what type of leader are you so that's all I have. I think we have some information for you as far as our um, leadership courses. Yeah, and we'll send these slides out to you so that you have all of this. If you are enjoying this kind of interaction, this is what we do in our credential courses, but we get much deeper. This is so light today. I, I wanna have a whole discussion about each one of those scenarios. Yeah. One thing to really ask yourself as you're leaving is when you think about those three different kinds of leaders, what qualities are necessary to carry that out? That's that's the next discussion. So that's something we're thinking about. Um, so we'll send these to you if you're interested. I also have, what's our next slide here, Courtney? Is it our, um, yes, I want to make this announcement while I have 227 people in a room, okay? <laughs> next year, Head Start turns 60. I'm completely changing the subject, by the way. This is my transformational leadership at work because I am <laughs> leaving the topic. Oh. Um, next year, we turn 60. <clears throat> NHSA is doing a bunch of different activities. One of them is called 60 Stories for 60 Years. And we have a professional storyteller who is going to help us put together interactive stories from across the country. This is the QR code or the link to that. If you are, if you have a Head Start story that you want to share, please fill it out. You might have been a Head Start child, but it isn't just for Head Start kiddos. It's it's parents, staff, community members, anybody who has been impacted or impact or impacted Head Start themselves who wants to tell a story can contribute. And then we're going to go through them and and uh, be in touch and kind of build them out. So. Um, I wanted to share this with you. And I think I have one more little announcement. Whenever I get people in a room, I like to make sure I do. What's my next one? I don't remember. Oh, I just wanted to let you know about the parent and family engagement conference that's coming up in December. So we'll put that in there too. Um, and yes, um, I, Susan, we're going to send this um, slide deck with our thank you. So you'll have these QR codes. And I think, did you put the link to the 60s in the chat, Courtney? There you go. <laughs> The, yet, the link no right there is will take you there. So if you want to click on it now, Susan, you'll have that link for yourself. If you ever have any questions about leadership or want to just touch base, I am 
super available and happy to talk to any of you. I think building leadership is the most important thing we do in Head Start because it's the way we support our staff who do the hard work every single day of working with children and families. So we have to have strong leadership if we think we're going to have strong programs. So you guys are have already taken the first step. You spent 30 minutes with us here today, which says a lot about you as people and leaders. And I congratulate you for that. And thank you for spending time. Be in touch with us. Share your ideas. That's why we're here to serve you. Um, and otherwise, have a wonderful day. And remember that Head Start is access to the American dream. Go make dreams happen. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, so when you said those three different types of leadership, like management, director, would you send that information by email or uh, somehow? Yes. Uh, um, uh, Christine, we're going to send you a thank you email for coming to this. And that slide deck will be in there. And it's okay. the like last second to last slide. So that's there. You also, my email is on NHSA's website. Anytime you have questions, Christine, just email me. I'd be happy to help Awesome. You. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate Thank it. You for it your very engagement. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.